Hi, I'm Bloodied Porcelain, and I'm playing Lady Nienna, the Ain She Sorceress. Hey, I'm Grizz, and I'll be playing Phoenix, the Werewolf Craftsman. Hi, I'm Legacy, and I'll be playing Brynhildr, the Phoenix School Witcher. Hi, I'm Overthinker, and I'll be playing Irelath, the Ain She Assassin. Hi there, I'm Stabbykins, and I'll be playing Sigrun, the Dwarven Merchant. I'm Solomon, and I will be playing, well, everyone else as the storyteller for this game. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. I'm so glad we're back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can all die together. Sorry, you had something to say. Sorry, boss. Always glad to hear that my players are happy to be back. When we last left our group of professionals, they had uncovered a conspiracy. What began with the cursing of a child of a nobleman had led them along a grand and heartbreaking adventure. They discovered the source of the curse was a warning created by someone who had begun to collect children from sing- all from single parents, all who had unique mystical gifts that had begun to manifest within themselves. Unique twists of chaos that they were weaving and just incorporating into their lives almost by instinct. This individual had a deep connection to our Anshi sorceress. And after discovering why he had been doing it, they came face to face with a true threat in the Master of Mirrors, an individual, a, an individual, a being that called itself Gontaro Dim. Defeating him narrowly in a game had him banished but left them behind to clean up the mess, to des- to decide what to do with the children, to decide how to handle the movers and shakers within the conspiracy, to decide what exactly was going to be coming up next. Especially given that Gontaro Dim made reference to a possible second conjunction of the spears. The first conjunction nearly tore the world apart when it threw elves and greater magics and various monsters into the world, into the continent. Who knows what a second may bring. But first, we have a particular meeting to get to. It is later in the evening. You have all had a chance to rest and recover your wounds have been seen to by imperial physicians you've been taken care of by a cadre of individuals who whose sole job is to prepare you for meeting with the white flame that dances on the graves of his enemies the emperor emir von emiris You have all managed to clean yourselves up. And for those of you who have portly attire, you've been able to switch into it. For those of you who don't, it has been provided. Even a set of portly attire for Phoenix, given his larger stature. You are currently outside the waiting room. You are within the waiting room outside the office of Lord Machina, which has been repurposed for the moment to be uh, the office of the Emperor. So that way he can meet with you while Lord Einar, Lord of Machina, is elsewhere.
What is going on in the minds of our professionals as they wait to be called in? Uh, I think Nienna is probably a little bit in shock. Um, like she goes through the motions of getting herself dressed and ready. Um, but her mind is a million miles away. She's trying to trying to figure out um, or uh, trying to take in all of the information that she got um, from Isilgir and uh, Odim and the fact that <laughs> the fact that she and Sigrid actually managed to survive, uh, uh, do their jobs um, and, you know, stepped out of a portal and directly into the path of the Emperor because, you know, of course we did. Uh, I believe Phoenix ran through every possibility, every exit he could think of, but there wasn't anything that wouldn't uh, put everyone else in danger as well. Um, I believe the only thought on his mind is that he didn't think he would die this way after everything he's been through. Bernhilder is doing her best to not show fear on her face. Um, and a lot of that has to do with uh, the fact that she's now just kind of accepting that uh, fate may or may not be smiling on them right now. Um, She's still unspeaking. And looks or feels like she's ready to accept whatever's coming their way. Aerolith is fine. He is a little reclined in his chair. He's got a drink in his hand to numb the pain from the giant slash he took on the back. He's been through rough scrapes. He's been debriefed by superior Nilfgaardian officers. Sometimes you get paid. Sometimes you get chewed out. This is a lot like the army. It's just a bigger officer. He's also run through some options and considered his allies and what might become of them and concluded that if this is an offer of some kind and things go well, great. Love to be on the same side as the white flame dancing on the grave of his foes. If this is a threat or a chance to imprison or kill us, well, you kill the leader first, and then you worry about the rest. Well, for Sigrun's part, a lot of this month kind of sucked. She got almost sunken into a bog, covered in the guts of many creatures that she didn't want to be uh, covered in. Um, almost chopped down by some crazed axeman towards the end of last season's events. But she did manage to outsmart a god, so, you know, she's got that going for her. Uh, and right now I think she's honestly trying to put off the anxiety of having to meet the Emperor with a capital E by kind of writing down all of her more recent accomplishments in her family's chronicle, which she hasn't even touched in years. 
and is mainly just trying to remember everything that happened, just scribbling furiously in the uh, the old collection and of bounded parchments. As you all have your various thought processes just running through your head, suddenly the door opens and a regally standing man in a set of quarterly attire that is, looks like it would take most of the, of the money that several people would make in their lifetime, several common people would make in their lifetimes, steps out to... Uh, stand before you, hands behind his back, and gives a short bow. The Emperor will now grace you with his presence. Come. As he just turns on his heels and leads you into the room. Uh, Irileth quickly takes another swig of his drink and then just pushes it into the hand of the nearest guard as he enters. Uh, Nienna follows the guy who's taking us in to see the Emperor. Um, she's changed into, like, proper full-on gown. She's got all of her own stuff, so it's all been sewn specifically for her. Yeah, Phoenix gets up slow. He doesn't want to antagonize any of these guards, and he's fairly certain most of them saw him for what he actually is, so he gets up real slow. He's probably a head and shoulders above a lot of them, actually, so he just falls off the way behind the others. Sigrid manages to wait until most of the taller people end up standing up and funneling in before she slowly slips in behind the small crowd to uh, make herself a bit less noticeable. Um, I think that Bernhilder is going to take the absolute back in this. Uh, she'll be the last one to go in. Very well. You all are led inside, and there are a number of seats that have been collected and pulled together for you all to have a place to sit. But at the moment, there is the Emperor, who is sitting rather lazily, almost, in the head seat behind the desk. The servant gives a much deeper bow, uh, holding his uh, hand out and one foot forward in traditional Nilfgaardian fashion. May I present to you the Ainshi sorceress Nina, the decorated Ainshi soldier Irileth, Brynhilde, Witcher of Nilfgaard, Sigrin, Boar Hunter, and Phoenixus Alums Cordova. Your Grace. And he just bows even lower before standing back up, and the Emperor just waves his hand and dismisses him without even a word. Nina curtsies low. Hiroleth also bows when his name is spoken. Uh, Brynhildr will bow. Sigrid manages something between a curtsy and a bow, and it's completely awkward and flustered. Phoenix doesn't do anything. Of course. The Emperor just slowly looks over all of you, eyes stopping on Phoenix for a few brief moments before he slowly stands. And for a man reaching his much later winter years, he still looks strong and regal. You are not the f first wolf that has not bowed to me, Cordova. Hmm. 
My father did for many years. I know. I remember him well. And then he just turns and looks to the rest. So I take it that your endeavor was a successful one on the other side of that portal. It was, Your Grace. My servants have told me of what exactly you were doing. And I would like to say, well done. But such things are in the past, and business is pressing. Nienna. Nienna will lift her eyes. <laughs> Looks a little uncomfortable, but placid. The nature of your bloodline has come to my attention. a uniqueness so rarely found these days. Mm. Well, it only recently came to my attention. Hmm. I would like to offer you a chance to utilize that gift for the betterment of your, well, continent, truly. In what way, Your Grace? I am offering you a position. You are to replace Lord Einar as the noble in charge of Machina. You will be relegated to Master of Coin. As such, you will be given the honors. You will be given your own colors to fly. And you will be given staff to keep you safe. Meanwhile, you will explore the nature of this gift within your blood and explore the prophecy connected therein. Will I have the option to select some of my own staff, Your Grace? Of course. I believe you already have a decision on who you will keep as your Vatgarn retainer, as he glances to Brynhilde before his eyes return to Nienna. Yes. Your Grace. Very well. I now open the room to speaking and asking freely. Is there anything that you would ask of me? <clears throat> Your Majesty, uh, it's an honor to meet you in person. Uh, when I reached out to you, um, it was regarding my prior employment status as a, as a contractor. Now I will openly admit I was not directly involved in the removal of 
uh, a very powerful being from this world. However, the price of multiple treacherous witchers, uh, should I take that up with you? Is there someone else I should discuss that with? I believe that it would be best discussed with the new master of coin of the city of Machina, given that you are to be employed as the head captain, as it were. Oh, the excellent. Guard. That answers that. Uh, follow up to that, then. I dare to assume that given your interest in seeing the Lady Nienna succeed in her endeavors, uh, that your agents will be advised to share any useful information about threats against her with myself and my office. Of course. Good. That's all I have. Any other question? Why am I still alive? Is there a reason that you should not be? You aren't known to take kindly. Monsters. That is correct. But I am also nothing if not pragmatic. You have not caused wanton destruction within the streets of the city. You have not moved against me and mine. I would have you live so that way you may continue plying your trade in the betterment of Nilfgaard. That doesn't Forgive me for being the one, but pragmatic or not, you have killed my kind for less. I have. So what's the I... catch then? I will not deny that your involvement with this prophecy has in a way shielded you from what would likely be coming otherwise. But you are skilled. You are capable. And you are involved within this. Perhaps by the end, my thoughts may change. Perhaps by the end, they will not. But for now, I and my Vatgun have need of your services, Master Silversmith, if you would give them. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need some, um, 
refining work on the new sword. Yeah, every uh, every group of professionals needs a strong, silent type. I'll speak as plainly as I want to. One of his mages killed my entire family. But judging by his tone and expression, I don't have a choice in the matter, do I? You always have a choice. But the, mm. some choices lead to shorter threads than others. Niana looked vaguely exasperated. Everybody's trying so hard to save his life. <laughs> And then the only thing I would ask of you, other than why am I alive? Is where is she? No, she's alive. She is. But she is no longer under my purview. After acting outside of my orders, he fled. Sintra has her now. Thank you for telling me. Of course. I have nothing to hide. And what of the children? A fair number of them lost their families when they were taken and have nowhere to go home to. He just stands a bit taller and moves to look outside of the window to actually see several of the children out uh, still on the, in the grounds playing and uh, just chasing one another. I do believe that, given your new instatement as a noble here, an act of charity would be a good start. The Anna so, mostly just looks relieved. She was worried he was going to like tell her that he was taking them. They know you. They trust you. They will learn better from you. Uh, to that end, I was actually hoping to ask for somewhat of a favor from you, uh, your grace. He moves over to Sigrin and just towers over her. Oh, my hair tall. <laughs> Speak. <clears throat> yes, uh, mm. oh, tall, um, yes, uh, well, given everything that has happened over the course of, goodness, however much time has passed <laughs> at this rate, I was deliberating, um, selling the bulk of my stock and uh, potentially uh, using those funds to uh, open up a school uh, of my own in order to uh, sort of help induct the children over time uh, back into uh, society, um, help them with their education, and potentially even help them even learn more about the extent of their own abilities. I was hoping you might help find a good uh, location within the city to open up such a school. It is already done. And he uh, pulls out a small map of the city 
from within his doublet and shows you a few prime locations. Several of them are very close with to the uh, main estate of Lord Ina. Huh? Well, you are quite uh, quick on the draw, Your Grace. I am not one to let things blindside me. I would imagine not so. Excellent. Um, if you would then, I would absolutely uh, love a copy of this to uh, review and look over. Take it. You will liquidate your stocks within the month. Of course. Thank you, Your Grace. And she'll kind of like awkwardly uh, teeter a little bit in her half bow, half curtsy. Well, Lady Nianna. Your Grace. I do believe that you have the funds, the plans, the location, and the children. Yes, Your Grace. If you have any more need of assistance, you may send word to my palace. To that end, Your Grace, um, as I'm sure you have guessed, my connection to one of the uh, foremost experts on the subject of the Elder Blood has been effectively cut off. Would you be willing to have your own experts uh, available for questions? as needed. As much as they can be. They have other avenues that they are working to explore as well. Of course, Your Grace. Nienna? Yeah? Could you give me a roll? Oh, what is the skill? I don't know. What is the skill? Seduction. Oh God, no! No, please, no! <laughs> you, I want to be a part of the story. If I seduce him, I get swept away to the capital, and you never see me again. Mm. No, life of the emperor. Look at me being all rich and stuff. Help! That's such a bummer. Let's make it a roll of human perception, if you would, please. Okay. Oh Jesus! Um. I don't think I have any bonuses to this. Nineteen. Not bad for the first roll. Do I need to spend luck? You get a feeling that there is more to this than the Emperor is letting on. But he has been playing this kind of game for decades now. So all you get is a gut feeling. You don't really get too much deeper of an understanding of what could be going on within his mind. Okay. I will, uh, kind of lower my eyes, uh, respectfully. Hmm. 
he will move back to the desk and begin to start writing. That is all. You are dismissed. I will back out of the room because you never put your never put your back to the to the head of state. Gorilleth knows enough to bow. He doesn't know enough to do that. Yeah, I don't think my man does it either, actually. He just turns around and walks out the room. Uh, Sigrun glitches between bowing and curtsying, having a panic attack, and then sculling behind the safety of the much taller people. Thus leaving Brynhilde and the Emperor in the room alone. The Emperor currently writing, not really paying too much attention to the Vatgarn, unless spoken to. Uh. No, I think that uh, if, he hasn't, if he hasn't said anything to her personally, she's just going to walk off. Fair enough. The door closes behind Brynhilde. And time passes by. It has been three months since the meeting with the Emperor. The exchange of power went over fairly smoothly. Though, of course, you also get the distinct feeling that it was not exactly Lord Einar's decision to step down and just become the master of coin. Yeah, I think Nienna would have made it clear that this wasn't her first choice either, and that, you know, she did, she she would do her best to make the transition as smooth as possible for both of them. Um, promise that, like, his, his son can... Uh, like, get the same education that he would have gotten and everything. She's going to try and keep them as comfortable as possible. Noted. We are actually going to begin with Nana. Okay. It is a rather busy day. You've been talking to merchants that have had to speak to you after not getting nowhere with the Master of Coin. You've been working to basically put out fires all around the city with people who need things, various uh, individuals who come bearing gifts or ideas and all kinds of various possibilities. And yet you feel that there is something off about today. It's been a feeling that has sort of pricked at the back of your mind for a while now. Could you give me your role of magical training? Sure. This can only be good. Do I get any bonuses or anything? I will say that I'll give you a plus two. 24. There is an oppressive air to the Regal Estate. Even the people not attuned to magic seem to feel it, as there have been more brief spats of conflict. There have been more uh, arguments within the house staff. You've heard a lot more snapping, raised voices 
and a lot more... You've even heard of some of your servants breaking down. Just for no real discernible reason beginning to sob and bawl their eyes out. But I can feel that there's something weird and otherworldly happening. Yep. I am calling for my vet gear. Okay. Turn to the nearest uh, servant. Bring me the vet gear and Brunhilde. At once, your grace. And say bow and then we'll head off to Brunhilde's room. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to click that. And Hilda. Yes. You are currently elsewhere. Else when. You're at the side of the road, currently resting on an old stump. Your hair cut a bit shorter as you sit across from someone you know quite well and someone who knows you. Egil smiles to you as he offers you a bit of the boar that you all, that you hunted together. I like the shorter hair on you. And not just because it's, it's harder for anyone to try to grab at. You know, most of the most of the men that I uh, that I used to do this with, uh, that's the advantage, right? Like you guys don't have to worry about maintaining hair; it's a lot easier. It's true uh, enough. And she uh, takes a knife and she stabs into the boar, and there's just a a genuine smile on her face. Um, she's like carving into this thing. Um, she pushes, she uses her non carving hand to kind of like push her bangs back. Uh, and then she looks up at him. So when do you think I'll be able to go off on my own? I actually start this, start my life. I definitely think that you're getting ready quite quickly, little bird. He just smiles at you. I remember the day that you came beating at the door at, at the care. I remember just seeing this potential in you and seeing how everyone else was jealous of it, that you were so willful and strong even then. Can you believe that was already decades ago? It is a little crazy, sure. Um, that I, I survived though, and you know, fuck those guys who, who thought I wasn't going to. Agreed. Fuck him. And he just gives Fuck you a him. very bright and genuine <laughs> smile. <laughs> and she, um, she just kind of grabs at her hair and just studies, like, the, the fact that it's silver and kind of runs that, that free hand through it again and twirls through it and but she quickly puts it down and um, the moment that the knife is fully through the rest of the boar she's gonna kind of like rip it open um, her hand is normal and she doesn't have gloves on um, and She she just feels happy. Um and she rests a hand on on, um, on Eagle and just 
after a moment and says, uh, thank you for teaching me, uh, past school. I, I know that I'm, I've got a long way to go, but I want to make a difference in this world. I want to, I want to prove to people that witchers aren't these bad people that they think that we are. And that's commendable. Though, of course, you still have a good bit left to learn. You still call I'll call us the Phoenix School, and he just, like, winks at you as he uh, rubs at the Griffin medallion. Just a little bit of teasing. He doesn't you, really you know what? Shh. You know what? I'm going to make my own school one day. Are you going to add Gwent and, and uh, Horse? Gwent, whores, magic. They won't know what to do with us. How could anyone ever plan what to do with you? Hey, they didn't think that a lady could become a witcher. Hadn't been done in how long? It's true enough. Mm. I mean, hell. I didn't think you'd kill me. And as you look back up at him, you see a wound beginning to open along his neck. But he still has that warm smile, even as blood begins to trickle from the wound and from his mouth. I think that's when she snaps back into reality. Yep. You wake up with a rather rapid and intense start. And I would like you to give me a roll of resist coercion. Funny. Well, damn. You feel something. Like the, uh, the echoes of that nightmare just sort of reverberating in your head, trying to almost find purchase within your psyche. But it fails. You've been having these nightmares for a while now. They always start gentle and sweet, almost saccharine, for turning into blood-soaked horror. As you hear the knocking at the door, uh, uh, Lady Brynhilde? She's gonna fall out of, like, roll out of bed and run her hands through her long hair and uh, look down at the hand that's busted. She'll just rip the door open. It's not Lady. Uh, Yes, of course. Uh, my apologies. And he just like immediately looks to the ground to avoid eye contact with your uh, feline eyes. What? Lady Nina has requested your presence uh, within her uh, office. All right. Chill. Her, her neck. And then throw on her gloves and make sure that she's got her medallion and her swords strapped to her back. And there's no smile on her face. She's very stoic. And she just steps to the side of this guy um, and makes her way to Nina's office.
And Nienna, you see Brynhildr walking in. She has begun to look a little bit disheveled, like she hasn't been sleeping well lately, especially when she sleeps alone. Well, Nienna will wait for her to enter. Um, will not seem to acknowledge how disheveled she looks, but instead um, will just turn to face her. And without looking at any of the servants in the room, will go, leave us. They all immediately just, almost in tandem, just bow and begin making way for the nearest exit. Uh, and as soon as they're out and the door is shut, Nina will kind of make her way over. Dreams again. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, I'll be... Uh, I'm, I'm... I don't need to know the content. I just need you to tell me whether or not one happened. Yeah. Well, I'm working on it. I understand. The offer I made before is open. If there's anything I can do, you have but to ask. I appreciate it, uh, Lady Nina. But... Oh, don't call me that when it's just us. <laughs> we work side by side for how many years? I know, how many decades? But if any of the others, uh, found out that I'd be so disrespectful to such a lovely lady. They'd for sure have my ass at the very minimum. Well, they'd have to go through me first. <laughs> that said, I need you to empty your mind and focus. So you tell me what you feel. Okay. What do your witcher, witcher senses tell you? And she's going to empty her mind and get into a meditative state. Um, I want to see if I can. I guess I want to see what what happens when I op open my my Witcher senses up just a little bit more. Um, does anything on my dim uh, my medallion ring? Do I feel anything in the air? You can immediately feel that oppressive atmosphere that uh, Nienna herself also feels. Uh, otherwise, uh, could you please give me a roll of Witcher training? That I can. No, I assume no additional modifiers. Uh, mm -hmm. Not for this one, no. Okay. 26. Very nice roll. This is uh, definitely a magical effect. At least you believe it is. It could be a curse. You can't exactly suss out what is going on here, but it seems almost like the entirety of the house has been put to a blanket of edge, as it were. Everyone within it is on a heightened sense or a heightened state of almost perpetual fight or flight. I you feel. feel darkness and cold here. Whatever this is, it's magical. Um, it's cold and almost oppressive. And a lot of people are on edge. I can't get a sense as to what exactly it is, but... How long has this been going on? Uh, Game Master. Is this something that's just just starting or has it been going on for a couple of days or 
It started off a little bit softer about a month ago. There were a few more people snapping at one another, but then immediately apologizing and just getting back to work. It's a lot stronger. It especially began to ramp up within the past week and a half. Yes, I've noticed. I have been trying to put my finger on it, but truth be told, I spend so much time buried in the muck and mine of the running the day to day that I haven't had the time to look as closely as I'd like. And now I fear I may have waited too long. I need you. I... I can kind of put my nose to the grindstone, see what I can find out. Uh, do you want me to go out and have a look around? Make sure that it's an, on a superficial level, nothing monster related. Because with how weird things been, things have been recently. I just want to make sure that it's not a creature that it's nested around here. Of course. You should um, perhaps ask Phoenix to go with you. Uh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'm I'll going to I'm have... Here. I'm going to talk to Irith about increasing the um, guard patrols and I'm going to check in with Sigrid to make sure that the children are all right. Some of them are due here for magic lessons soon anyway, so yes. Uh, and don't overwork yourself. You know how it can be when you get stressed. Yana smiles a little bit. She looks she looks t t tired, but not like quite bone tired. <laughs> She's just looks like she hasn't uh hasn't been sleeping well, but not because of, of dreams, just because she doesn't sleep very much at all. Bernhilder is going to rest a hand on her shoulder and just look at her for a moment. I'm serious. You worry about me. It's my turn to worry about you. Don't just... overextend yourself. Because Thank I'll put you to sleep if I have to. <laughs> Thank you. She'll uh, give probably the closest thing to a smile that Bernhilder knows how to give, uh, which is like a half smirk before pulling away and uh, turning around. I'll go do that check. I'll go grab... I'll go grab Phoenix and um, we'll see what we can find. Thank you. Just step out. Um, I am going to the door uh, to call for a runner to go find me the captain of my guard and to send word to the school. Uh, if Nienna had any buy-in on where the school was located, she would have picked the closest place to the keep. Um, that she could get. Understood. Um, and she'll send a runner to the school and to Sigrid. Uh, that if she can, if she can get away, uh, the lady of of the keep would like to speak to her. Noted. We'll begin with Irileth, given that I assume Irileth is within the itself being the captain of the guard here. He could be. He could also be out on the town. Makes sense. The runner finds Irileth. Uh, do describe what exactly Irileth is up to this day. It's getting to be the uh, later morning. Uh, the runner enters the barracks to see Irileth have it holding one guy against the wall with a hand and yelling at two others. I get it. It's a bad day. We're all on edge. I don't care who stole who from what right now. You are all late for rounds. So if I see any of you sparring, fighting, getting in each other's faces, spitting, 
all of you will be cleaning latrines for a week. Am I understood? Give me a roll of intimidation. Oh boy, I got dust stuff. Oh. Uh, any modifiers for being their boss? Plus four. 23. They immediately snap to, atten to attention and just salute. Yes, Captain. All right, get out of here. And you drop the individual that you were holding up against the wall and he just scurries off, uh, looking a little bit uh, more defeated, especially given that he was a uh, human. I don't care. Everybody's up with petty bullshit today and I'm not having it. The runner uh, stops and gives a bow. Uh, Captain Irleth, sir. Speak. Uh, Lady Nienna requests your presence within her office. About what? She didn't say so. She just sent uh, myself and another to fetch you and uh, Miss Sigrid. All right. She called for the others. He starts she, walking with the messenger. She spoke to Letton Brynhilde uh, previously, but Brynhilde was sent off to begin doing the round, doing rounds about the keep with uh, Master Phoenix. Hmm. All right, dismissed. Thank you, sir. And he just gives another bow and uh, heads off to other duties. And Irileth will head up to the office, uh, breaking into a mild jog when he thinks no one can see him. Understood. The runner that heads to the school, it is one that was built close to the keep itself. Uh, the school is actually not as loud as some might expect it to be. The students are all quite well behaved. The majority of them are students who are the gifted children that you assisted, that you saved. There are a few other students within the city because others wanted to have, have their children get a good education, but for the most part, it is the gifted students who are all diligently working to learn anything that Nina and Sigrun and the others deign to teach them. Sigrun, what is today's lesson? An excellent question. Uh, well, as it just so happens, today is uh, more about um, practical arithmetic, uh, mostly like the very basic foundational concepts of like pretty much concepts like profit, um, overhead, uh, interest, you know, mainly in terms of like banking, doing business, like just very surface level details. Uh, given how excitable the last few days seem to have been with the more gifted students, uh, she figured something a bit more uh, calm and oh, there you see it, quote unquote, boring to kind of round out the week was much more needed. Understood. Please give me a roll of I will allow teaching or education. Education will be a little bit tougher because it's not actually it's just your own knowledge, not focused on the skill of teaching others. Boo, I do not have any teaching, so I'll just use education. I'm sure this will be fine. It's fine. Uh, the, the students are all bu busy working, uh, doing basic arithmetic, various uh, levels of, addi of additions. Some of the even younger students are doing maths that are what you would assume a bit beyond them for their age. Even five-year-olds are 
beginning to add up and subtract within the double digits. Excellent, excellent. Tis a good day. And you see a runner uh, come into your classroom, but uh, just quietly making his way to the front. Uh, Miss Sigrun. Yes? Uh, Lady Niana has asked for your presence within her offices. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, and she will kind of take a scan of the room. Uh, does she currently have any of her uh, teacher assistants in at the moment? Uh, yes, you have one teaching assistant who uh, was basically uh, the tutor for uh, Lord Einar's son, who was then repurposed as to being your assistant and helping with actually teaching the children. Uh, he just looks to you and just like gives you a small smile and nod and a wave of like, go, go. All right, I'll try to be back as soon as I can. Uh, and she will uh, quickly scuttle out of the room uh, before anybody notices anything amiss. All right. Um, did she mention what this might be about? She did not. She just asked myself and another to retrieve you and Ka and Captain Irileth, uh after speaking to Brynhilda uh, briefly. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will be right on my way. And she is going to pick up the pace and uh, start beelining uh, for her general location. Uh, would you like me to go to the stables and ask and request a render to be brought out, ma'am? Oh, just what was I thinking? Yes, yes, please, please bring him by. At once, and he just begins bolting, uh, his longer legs taking him to the stables faster than your shorter legs work to get you towards your destination. And there we go. <laughs> it is not too long after that uh, you and Aerolith find yourselves in the same room. Aerolith arrived first, you arrived not too, too long after that. Um, I think when Irolith first comes into the room and it's just the two of them, I just want to throw out there that um, Nienna will wait for the door to shut and then we'll walk over and hug him. Hey. Hi. Rough day? Incredibly. Gives her a kiss. I'll, um, catch you up once Sigrun's here. I've already had this conversation once. I don't want to have to do it four times. Yeah. You called Brunhilda first, didn't you? I did. Did she and flirt with you? you? No. She expressed concern for the fact that I don't sleep enough, and she's right. Well, I'm not likely to get you let you get a lot more sleep. I just got to put that out there. I've noticed. Mm. And I, I'm going to say for the sake of... Uh, uh, comedic timing that is about the time that Sigrid, like, stumbles into the room. Absolutely. After putting her hair up to the door to hear the tea. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You fucking know it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll kind of hip check the door on her way in. She's kind of uh, smoothing out her hair. Definitely wasn't listening in on mm -hmm. anything. <clears throat> totally don't oh. catch us making horny faces at each other. Oh, well, I got here as soon as I could. I had to borrow some extra legs for the trip over. What exactly is all this about? Thank you for coming. Um, is Render with Sigrun? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, Nina is going to sit down and hold out a hand to give Render scritches. Um, as she was so wont to do in the first season. <laughs> Render is <con> <laughs> <Render's> constantly <laughs> getting fed treats and, and getting pets whenever Nana's around. Yeah, he's actually oh, a little, little bit thicker by now, you've noticed. <laughs> he doesn't run around say, as much. <laughs> yeah, that wolf's gonna get fat. <laughs> um, Something magical, then. Yes. Sigrun, shut the door, please. Yes, uh, she'll close the door shut. I've had a growing 
feeling of dread and pressure for some time now. It started a few weeks ago, but it's gotten progressively worse this week. It's been ramping up rapidly. I don't know what it is. I know that it's magical, which is why I called Brynhilda first. If there's a creature of some sort or a curse that I'm missing, oh, Vatican is much more likely to catch it than I am. Hmm. And I'd rather her be the first thing it meets than a normal god. Um, that being said, Irileth, I'd like you to double the patrols. Don't tell them why. Just use it as an use the excuse that they have all of that extra energy that has everyone so snappy at each other that they can burn yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that approach and I can probably get it done, but the number of complaints about uh, being bored, being overworked, working with, I swear to God, even good friends are starting to get tired of each other. Unfortunately, I thinking, little I can do about that. Right. I was thinking about bringing on some new hires. Maybe, you know, change things around a little bit. Let people hang out with people they don't know. But... Well, then you You're run the risk that... of them getting under, under each other's skins for entirely different reasons. Right, but are you saying that's magic? You're saying people are pissed at each other not just because the weather's bad? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I wasn't sure until more recently, but yes. Uh, Stahl, so, uh, has any of the students been under any similar effects or duress? A number of the students have been off. Some of them have sna have snapped, but they've been keeping a bit more control over it than even you've seen on in the keep. You do remember uh, Tabitha, the uh, young girl who was very gifted within the sea, within waters, mentioning that she had a nightmare about a dark, a dark old home. One where, uh, where it used to be laughter, now there was, uh, there was crying. I don't know if this is particularly relevant, but, um, well, some, some of the children, uh, have been having difficulties as of late, um, and Tabitha shared with me somewhat recently a bit of a odd nightmare. Something about a home that's turned darker. It used to be filled with laughter, but now it's just crying from what she's told me. Have you noticed that their upset has been more or less common in those with gifts? It I definitely see. seemed that there that there have been moments where it's been more common in gifts, and there have been more of them that that you've heard talk about having dreams, and all those that have those dreams are those that are gifted. It comes and goes and swells, but for the most part, it seems to be affecting primarily those with gifts, and the ones with gifts are the only ones so far that have had these sort of dreams. Nina will nod. Um, so have I have it, had any dreams? A couple. But they have not been as intense until recently. The most recent one you had was basically watching as you were sitting in the study of Isilgir just relaxing with him, spending time together, reading, just watching the study burn and seeing a familiar man in tattered yellow robes 
gripping at Isildur's throat as you would watch his body disintegrate, and the man laughing. It's the man who I think it is? There is. Of course it is. Okay. Has Irileth had nightmares? A few, but you don't really remember them. The most you remember is the beating of horse hooves and the sounds of slaughter, not combat. So nothing new. Nothing new. All right. I've had dreams. Um, not as many, though I suspect that Never mind. Um, all right. I think given that it is most prevalent in those with gifts and a natural tie to chaos, that suggests it is in fact magical in nature. The question is, is it a creature or is it a curse? I haven't seen anything to make me think it's a curse yet. I think I'd be more aware of it if it were. Right. If it's affecting the keep primarily in nearby areas, what if it's... I mean, you say it's magical, but... stuff like that. There was this guy, uh, a spy, and he was in our ranks for a while, and he'd always go around and, like, put some shit in a different pot of soup. So you'd have a bunch of guys freaking out and losing it and very unpleasant. And it was always in an area. This feels like if it's the castle where people are freaking out and kind of nearby. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Oh, I certainly think it's focused here. And um, if it is less effective to those in the school, that sounds like the radius probably starts here and extends outward. The school is close, so. So we are being targeted. Possibly. All right, I'll double the guards. Uh, with your permission, I'll let the captains of each rotation know that something specific is up and not that this is just, you know, for fun. Don't tell them it's magical. Just... Are you sure? That's the kind of information that could make a lot of difference if something starts blowing up. It's also the kind of information that when everyone is on edge could lead to a lot of magical people being targeted and killed. Uh, that, and not to mention, if someone is specifically targeting the keep with magic, well, we don't exactly know what part of the ranks that they're currently occupying could tip them off. Fair enough. Officers only, no mention of magic specifically. Thank you. Yep. Need anything else? Um... No. Um, I'm fine. All right. Sigrin, I yes. think it goes without saying that for a few days we should probably call off the children's extra studies that usually happen here at the Keep. I think that just sounds just right, yes. So be sure to, uh, I can call it off entirely. I might also be able to find other places for them to maybe take their minds off of things for a few days, at least until we can figure out what's going on. If you can, have those who have had the nightmares write me, uh, write out as much detail as they can about their dreams, and if they're unable to write, bring them to me and I will speak to them. Of course. Um, and a, just a thought, if any of them seems particularly affected, such as Tabitha, it might be time to break your rule that Renda isn't allowed to sleep inside. Having a warm presence to curl up with might help them sleep better. 
Well, I'll be sure to inform Render of his change in duties. And she'll kind of reach up and give uh, the wolf a bit of a pat-pat as he uh, <laughs> lulls his tongue out and just pants. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Anything else you need from me? No, I'll let you get back to your duties. All right, darling. And be sure to actually get some sleep. I know you've already been told, but... <laughs> I shall try. That's all I can ask for. All right, come along, Renda. We have some paperwork to do. And she'll take my lead and walk on out. Render looks very uh, upset that he has to leave the scritches, but he plods along after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we let the go tell his people. No, nope. and then he's got another stop he wants to make. Okay. We will get to that in a moment. First, we are going to take a look over to the open air smithy that is by the stables. Phoenix, you and Master Hattery have been hard at work just keeping this place stocked with weapons, armor, repaired gear, and even silver weapons, given the nature of, well, who works here? And understanding the various sorts of magical and monstrous threats that could be at play. Uh, could you give me a roll of crafting just to see like how you're doing on your current project? You got it. Mm -hmm. Twenty-two. That was really low. Even for being really low, it's still a good roll. You've been uh, hammering away at uh, replacing the officers' blades and giving them uh, silver equivalents, so that way they are more capable should there be more mystical threats and Master Hattery uh, is doing acting more to assist given that he has basically released you from being his apprentice and now is more and now you are his colleague and he also is making sure that uh the pins that had to be put back in place are not being too effective against your work Right. Brynhilda, you are walking on in while uh, hearing the usual song of Biggin as he tends to the stables, given he, that he is the uh, stable master's right hand, uh, brushing the horses as usual while singing his song. Of course, uh, as they um, as he is working hard and diligently. Um, Bernhilder will pass by and just give him a, a, a solid clasp on the shoulder, uh, and a, a nod, um, before passing by him to meet with Phoenix. He just, like, looks, like, to one side real, uh, really slowly, then looks back to the other. Uh, witchy friend, and just waves, uh, while you pass by. Uh, she'll, she'll, she'll wave and uh, um, I think at this point she's actually got her she's tied her hair up to not look nearly as disheveled I mean like she's still rocking like the the bags under her eyes and the, the obvious lack of sleep but at least her hair is out of her face especially as she gets closer to like the fire Hey. Uh, you have a couple of moments for free? Uh, yeah. Phoenix, like, looks up from uh, one of the blades. Um, yeah, he's been busy. He hasn't shaved in a while. He's got some scruff growing in. Um, 
his undercut is looking a little rough right now and his braids are his dreads are way too long now uh, and I think with your cat eyes you can actually see um, he's not wearing gloves anymore but you can actually see where the redness around where the pins are on the back of his hand are starting to spread to other parts of his body he's looking he's looking poisoned yeah um and he just gives you like a rough grin Lady Bryn, how may I assist you? Why do all of you insist on calling me Lady Bryn Hitler? He douses the blades. You're my sister, I'm allowed. Uh, fair fucking tastic. All right. You know what? Fine. Only you can get away with it, but. You know, Lord Phoenix. <laughs> Lord Phoenixus, if you're gonna call me anything, you're gonna call me by my proper name. Ah, uh, you're right, you're right. How treacherous of me. I'm nothing more than a wild animal out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Once you enter the Lord of the Coals domain, as he like gestures to the open air smithy and like cough. Uh, uh, what do they want now? He like, he, like gestures for her sit. Shit's gonna awry again. Uh, I was going to go and do a uh, quick look around the uh, the outside of the uh, the perimeters. I was wondering if you would like to join me for old time's sake. Pulls the blade out and to get the cat off the scale off of it. Yeah, I'm just gonna be this. <laughs> Can't really be myself. With all these North Guardians around. I know. I know. Well, this might get you a chance to let loose for a little while. At the bare minimum, we're not gonna be around so many uh, townsfolk. We're uh doing a look around some uh, shit near the premises is kind of uh, gone a little crazy people are more at each other's throats uh, I picked up on something cold don't quite know if it's a creature or if it's magic so uh, if we're lucky it's creature Oh, we're lucky. Uh, you know, put the blade up, stick it straightness, and like set it down. All right. I don't mind. Uh, keep in mind, like taps the back of his neck. If things get too squirrely, I can't do much without help. So. I know. All right. Don't uh. Mind. Your, your, your older, wiser, and she'll wrap an arm around him. Your older, wiser, uh, uh sword swinging, bitch flinging sister will, uh, will protect you. Oh God, you're in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you have a good moment earlier? As he uh, starts walking over to get his uh, Highland Mahler. Oh, uh, you know. It's not as good as it's going to get right now. I won't do anything. I work for her now, so. Listen. Yeah. You know, I don't want you to be happy. And I also don't want you to get hurt. So. I know. I know. I gotta, I've gotta be professional or whatever the fuck. You know, we I, have to be so professional. I mean, there's plenty of large balconies, cliffs, at least few bridges without any rivers underneath them. I'm saying there's all kinds of ways to make this happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a rugged chair. Since I'm down all the time, anyway. 
Uh, no, as funny as that would be. No. <laughs> well, let's, think, let's not fuck with the little elf too much. <laughs> Grumbles as he picks up the... Uh, slings it over his shoulder. All right, let's take a look around. All right. And, you uh, could just throw him and say no. I think you want that more than anybody in this group. <laughs> Yeah, you right. a couple times, slap him around. Yeah, he's the kind of to say harder. All right. Where do you want to get started? <laughs> You're so messed up. I'm right. Like, I, there's no way he wouldn't enjoy it. I think you overestimate our our uh, working relationship. I don't think I underestimate anything. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, uh, but uh, I very quickly found out that uh, he's oh, not my type. That's true. No, no offense yeah. taken. It was weird on multiple counts. Uh, what? It was a one-time thing. What? It's fine. It was caught how many years ago? <laughs> well, I'm not talking about that. No, there was the oh, other guy. Oh, I'm God. not talking about that. Oh, oh you brought it up. No, I'm walking oh, no, now. No, no, no. You we brought it up. I'm no, walking. No, 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 no. We get, <laughs> oh, God. Listen, I haven't slept properly I'm walking. in like a month and you, a half. I'm we, poisoning no. myself to make sure everyone's happy. Don't talk to me about not sleeping. Oh, look at me. I'm big sword woman. I have nightmares. And on that You're such a back. bitch. <laughs> I would like both of you to plead roles of awareness if you would be so kind. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, that's good. Can I roll awareness yeah, to see what they were boy. giggling about? <laughs> you can it's roll human perception. Human <laughs> perception. Keep... They're yeah. giggling at a character at each other. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, do... Ba, 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 ba. And they're so walking us, it's like, what about that blonde in the market? <laughs> 22. All right. Both of you do the general rounds of this, of the keep. And you are just looking for any signs, any weird marks, any, uh, Indication that there are beasties about. You don't really get too much at first. But when you actually get a little bit uh, more outside and get closer to the wall where it's not exactly the most well guarded part of the wall. And you just... As you get closer, you feel the, a bit more of this magical pressure. And you feel like you're being watched. Just saying, if you didn't like always get buying, buying flowers from her, the blonde from the market would be a good option. She's really cute. I, I, I'm not... What? I just, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. she's she's cute, sure, but like, yeah. every time she sees me, like, she gets that weird, you feel that? No, I'm not you talking to the blonde in the market. What, what? are you feeling? Yeah. Like? Yes, I not feel that, it. Not that. Leave what? me alone. Yes, we're being watched. No, let's just keep up the conversation. It's completely being natural about this. Um, I'm not, I won't leave you alone. You're dating someone by the end of the day. Uh, the end of, oh, the end of today, yeah? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm, listen, I'm, I have a job. I'm getting paid to do a job. N- not the greatest money, but, you know, it's a job. <laughs> yeah, he'll just, like, gesture at the wall while you're talking so you can look at it better. Yeah. Um, she's gonna get, like, uh, she's gonna get, um, a better. I tend to get like a better look. Uh, does her medallion going off at all? It is. It's buzzing very lightly. Okay. Mm. Fuck. 
whatever, whatever it is, it's buzzing. And no, it's not the girl at the flower shop. Not yet. I. <laughs> Oh, God, I can't laugh. God damn it. All right, yeah, you're funny. You're funny. And um, using the, um, using the, 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 the faint, like, humming of her medallion, she's going to uh, begin to approach the sea as if she's getting closer, if it starts buzzing more. As you approach the wall, it does. And you think you hear a low rumble. And you don't feel it in the earth. You just more hear it's like uh, the sound of a rumble coming from deep within the chest of someone or something. From within the wall, the within the like actual keep wall. Yeah, you know, I think that the flower girl, whenever we, um, whenever we, uh, I go and see her to buy, uh, you know, flowers, uh, kind of looks at me a little bit weird. I think she might be a little bit afraid of me. And as she's having this conversation, um, with Phoenix, she's pointing to the wall and kind of like gesturing for him to use his hammer. Well, I mean, you can be a little bit intimidating to most. You're almost as tall as I am. And I'm an actual monster. But I think if you, uh, I don't know, use that like a roll rumble thing, you got to go with your voice all the time. It might do something. Maybe. But oh, it does. definitely does. I've seen that way now and it looks at you. My God. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's talking. the thing. Um... <laughs> Um, and he's going to uh, pull them all from out on from out behind him and um, give a one two swing, like go like one two, and he's gonna haul off on this thing. Give me a roll of melee. Uh, oh, we said um, the mall was brawl actually. I think we said that it was Brawl when you were in your werewolf form. Oh, can it still be Brawl? Because, it's because we said that, all my points are in Brawl. <laughs> I'll allow it, but it will be half um, because you're not in your current werewolf form. Sure, and sorry, this will be easier for when you were in your werewolf form. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You are a kind soul. Um, uh, Strong stray. No. Uh, and we were minusing three. Um, uh, target location, we'll go uh, torso. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a uh, 14. Uh, no, it's a, a 17. it's a 17. All the uh, negatives are already put in there. Oh, they were? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. 17. You swing at the wall and you just hear the crash and clatter of stone shattering. And then you feel something. It's this deep, unsettling warmth that just sort of pushes through your chest and just through your entire body. It makes you shiver as it like caresses and almost grips at your spine for a brief moment. And you smell sulfur. And uh, Brynhilda, I would like a roll of dodge or uh, block. Okay. Guys, I think I hit a dragon. <laughs> I think I just went a bat up to the dragon's head. <laughs> if it was a dragon, you wouldn't be feeling your spine. You'd be missing it. Yeah, 
yeah, you know, I like to think that too, but maybe Fair. it woke him up. <laughs> maybe, you know, just a little thickle on the nose. Mm. Now, could I use my swordsmanship to, to, yeah. to block the, uh, to block whatever the fuck is coming after me? Exactly, yes. You can either Thanks. choose to dodge it with dodge it or use your swordsmanship to block. To just awesome. sort of like give yourself some distance. Awesome. Party arming up. Castle's a mimic. What do you eat? Not All another right. one. You like like smell the sulfur and immediately draw your blade and bring it up and just use it almost like a bar to keep uh, this beast uh, a little bit of distance between yourself and this beast as you are tackled to the ground and pinned under a large mass. It looks akin to a hound, but there are no eyes. The maw is much larger and full of cruel obsidian fangs. And you can see that there is this a uh, roiling green flame uh, in the back of the throat as the skin is just stretched across what looks almost akin to a corpse. If you could please give me a roll of monster lore. All right. Um, so uh, because of my witcher intelligent, my, my witcher training, I actually use witcher training instead of monster lore. By all means, please. Okay. No, he's just a little guy. Yeah, he's just a little baby. It's fine. It's fine. 27. This is what you know to be a bar guest. <laughs> Fuck me running. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it Fuck is me. a uh, spectral <laughs> hound oh, that, specific that specifically works to hunt cursed beings or cursed individuals. Oh, God. Uh, but is it body? It not is yet. not body. It do be hungry, though. And it is just snapping its large mouth down at you and trying to get at you. And the moment it sees that it can't, it just opens its mouth and you see the flame beginning to build again. Yeah. And I would like about to a to please. All right, bad about a swing, y'all. This fucker ain't doing a damn thing. I'm sorry, you said initiative. Initiative, please. Oh, no. Yeah. It's hungry. And Brent Helmo's looking like a snack right now. 14. Or Brent Helmo's always. always looking like a snack. What do we <laughs> do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got to be more professional, guys. Damn. Well, let's let's be honest. It's not the only thing on this stream that wants a bite of Brent Hilder. It's okay. Um, it's true. Uh, initiative bonus is... It's just your reflexes, right? Yeah. It is your reflexes, yes. Sweet. There you go, buddy. That's what we like to see. Oh, then I already added it, so that would have just been a fucking 18. That's fine. Still good. All right. Yeah. I forgot this is a good sheet, but it's good in the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. It's good at moments. Uh, so. Uh, surprising absolutely fucking no one. Uh, Phoenix is going first. And about a swing. Give me that roll. Oh, let's do it. Um, by the power vested in me by the might of my fucking <laughs> giant ass hammer. Um, damage. We're gonna go with a uh, fast strike. Right. Uh, 17 and a 15, um, damage 25, first location, uh, 9 and 5. Okie dokie. Left uh, leg and then torso on the monster. Or left, yeah. Two fast strikes. Both of which hit, uh, both of which are minor criticals, so they will deal an additional uh, three points of damage. So go ahead and roll the damage if you please. Oh, no, wait, you already did for the first one, please. Yeah, 25 for the first one, and then it is 
the second one I'll just use this handy dandy dice roller um we're gonna do one, two three four five six d6 is plus six roll of it for 26 for 29 okay the Bargus takes the hit to one of its legs and then to the hit to another one as you are just uh, or well, the hit to one of its legs and then to the torso as you force it off of Brynhildr, giving Brynhildr a chance to stand back up. The uh, Barghast is scrambling up to its feet and letting out this low, vile roar, a bellow almost like from the depths of the earth itself back at you. Brynhilda, it is your turn. Come on, oh, big boy. <laughs> I'm going to take out, um, I'm going to take out Divine. Um my 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 sword um and seeing that this thing wants a wants a little taste of witcher uh <laughs> i'm gonna do uh two fast strikes at it okay A 23 and a 28. I will roll to see if it can even get the heck out of the way. Nope. Uh, both of those are going to be uh, significant crit significant criticals, dealing seven dam extra damage each. Okay. And it hits the right limb and the left limb. You thought you were going to have arms? <laughs> Not so today. It's uh, the D6 plus seven, correct? Or is it an additional seven D6 on top of that? Uh, it's it's an addition. It's a plus seven static modifier, not, a, not additional dice. Oh, cool. 40. Mm. And that is for the first strike. The second one, if you would, please. Thirty-four. Cool, cool. You uh, bring your blade uh, to bear, feeling the power resonating within this relic as you just swing low and just take out its limbs before basically bringing the uh, blade down and chopping this thing in half. As but instead of leaving a corpse, it leaves behind piles of akin to basically essence and dust, given that it is a specter. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to grab like a little like pouch um, and put the sp specter sparkles uh, in, the, uh, in the in the pouch mm -hmm. uh, and throw them. Uh, in in my um in like my 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 bag uh, it might be worth bringing these to uh uh to Nana and uh seeing what if about... uh... sorry I had a thought what what about the fishing boat captain that you talked to a couple months back what about him no her God. Her. What about yeah. her? What about her? Okay. I mean, I'm just giving you options. It's fine. Are we really going back to this conversation right now? What? It's dead. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. But you also have to remember that it's mm -hmm. a little bit harder for me to um, <clears throat> read the room for people. I mean, I know. That's like what I'm we here have, for. We have a lot. Of, you're, you're, you're giving me a lot of options, but we don't know if any of them are. Um, <clears throat> and she gestures to just her body. <laughs> you know, you are grossly underestimating yourself. I don't know. You're interested. All right. I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being interested in. What... Yeah, no, you know, I am, too. Uh, OK. Actually, let's ask the end about this. That's a good idea. 
So I'm sure that asking me about this would, is going to go so fucking well. About the Barkus? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop. Uh, you're, you're, you're a beta We man. don't get to talk anymore. We don't get to talk anymore. I know. Okay. Life, life's hard. You being a, you being a, a weaponsmith, me being a weapons user. It's all very superficial nowadays. Oh, I just had a thought. Everything's fine. Yeah, we're good. I think we should probably take one more lap just in case. That's a good idea. <laughs> I just, out of character, I just had the thought the blood curdling roar of a bar guest probably threw some eyes over here. Yeah. <laughs> we're good. We're, we're good. good. We're good. Is that like a the, hole in the wall? <laughs> genuinely the most professional professionals to ever professional. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. There uh, is a there is a crater in the wall where your uh, hammer hit, but not from where the actual uh, bar guest burst through. Because it's a specter, it has the ability to basically phase through physical objects. Oh, I just pissed it off. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I'll pay for the wall. You know who I think about every now and again. Mm. Remember that 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 succubus. From the uh, from the other tavern. Yeah, another round sounds great. Yeah, let's take a look around. Uh, yeah. I think uh, yeah, that spot looks like just way over there. Oh, absolutely! They just uh, they just <laughs> <laughs> take another couple minutes to um, circle around <laughs> and just grill each other. Right. Fair enough. <laughs> During your grilling, you do find a few more spots that smell akin to that same sulfuric scent. But you don't hear that rumbling and your uh, battalion doesn't shudder, which means that there might have been Barghists or something akin to them there, but mm -hmm. they're not there currently. OK, cool. Which tracks for you because you know that Barghists tend to hunt in packs akin to wolves. Yeah. Mm. Um, then if we have confirmation that there's a nothing um she'll walk phoenix back to the uh the the smithing station and she'll uh make her way back to niana's office with uh with the little pouch and tow. fair enough while you're doing that i would like to check in with irleth what was that second stop you were going to make uh during the last few months <clears throat> As per my discussion, or my brief conversation with Emperor Ver Emerus, uh, I would like to have a contact in the city that connects to, like, either the network that I'm trying to build or his spy network. And I'd like to hit them up and see if they've heard anything about forces moving against us. All right. You have made a contact that uh, generally works almost more like freelance information gathering. Doesn't exactly work with the Emperor, though you do think that uh, given some of the information that he's gotten you in the past, it's very likely that he might have wor worked at least with someone the Emperor has spoken to. Mm -hmm. The Master of Nilfgaard is probably a really good client. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the individual you know know is an, is a man named Reuven, but he and he stands tall, uh, broad shoulder. Definitely looks like he was a soldier in the day. Uh, looks like the past twenty years haven't been super kind to him, given that he is has plenty of scars, including a uh, glass eye. But he. Mm knows his stuff when it comes to information gathering. All right. Uh, where do we meet? Uh, the body bar guest, given that it is large, usually very busy, neutral ground for a lot of various uh, conflicting parties at work in Machina. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I head in. And you see that he is at his uh, usual table, uh, not in the corner, in the center. In the corner is actually a very suspicious place. 
So he mm-hmm. just like uh, front and center, surrounded by people who are all having their conversations, working to drown out yours. Say hi to Molly. Say hi to Saffron. Say hi to Melly. Say hi to the barkeep's name was. I don't know. I say hi to her too, as I get a drink. And he is just watching you move, saying hi to all of the various girls. Uh, and he is currently sipping at his own uh, drink, which seems to be some of the better wine in the establishment. Not the very top shelf, but closer. Cool. Uh, I will get him the next thing up and bring it over for him. He just nods to you and uh, kicks your chair out to let you slide on in. Thanks, friend. How's the evening? Better than most. Mm. Don't have every don't have every wound itching as much as it has in the past while. Well, that's you? good. You know. I thought it was going to be a normal day dealing with this and that. And then I I heard something interesting. I have reason to believe and I, I can't get into the details just yet. I think someone's taken a shot at the palace or someone's scouting it. The one I know, the one in the capital or the one here? The one here. I don't know if they're specifically looking into Lady Nienna or if there's something else they're after, but uh, I wouldn't rule out Thieves Guild, Rogue Mage, someone with some pull. What about the elves? Do you think elves are coming after us? I think that there's been a lot of talk about how communication between Nilfgaard and Dolbathana has gotten strained lately. Something's got them on edge. Hmm. When did that start? Things have never exactly been friendly between the two groups. Uh, greater kingdoms of the southern continent. Yeah. I mean, they did use my people for cannon fodder for a long time, so... True enough. But it really began to deteriorate about two months ago. Hmm. Ambassadors straight up pulled out of the palace walls in in the capital about a month and a half ago. Interesting. Very interesting. So, have you heard? You haven't heard anything specific? Just uh, political leanings here and there. Nothing but weird whisperings about how some of their uh, sages, actual sages, have apparently con- gone back home to Roost and have begun working on something. Don't know exactly what, just know that apparently enough of them are putting their differences aside to come together and work. So they cut communications and all their leaders start to gather. Yeah, that sounds like trouble. The magic ones, at least. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I want you to know how much I appreciate it, so I'll give you a little snippet you might not get a lot of other places. One of those sages was a couple of months ago in a real bad deal with a being more powerful than himself. And he got out of it because he got lucky. Hmm. 
That could be useful. And he just gets a like a little twitch to the side of his mouth. This is an individual that doesn't really seem like he's comfortable smiling. Mm -hmm. But that little like betrayal of his thought uh, shines through for the moment. Yeah. Well, I trade quality for quality. You keep me informed, I'll tell you everything I got. Fair enough. And he will uh, down the last of his drink and move to stand. Go ahead and get back to your post, uh, Captain. You too, sir. Keep an eye out. And with that, he will nod and make his way out of the bar guest. Uh, a lot quieter than someone of his stature should be moving, you think. Mm -hmm. Aerolith will head back to the palace. Up to you whether he hears screaming and banging on walls and roaring of monsters. I think that he would be uh, arriving just in time to see Brynhilda begin actually moving back to the uh, keep pro the uh, like manner proper with a, a bag of something that smells strongly of sulfur. Mm. Yeah, I'll walk up on him. Hey. Uh, <coughs> hey. What? What is that smell? Uh, monster, ethereal, uh, at a, at a, at a uh, above, t is they called again? Bar guest. But, oh, eh, bar guest. What, like, like the body bar guest? Mm, more like, uh, things that grow hungry for cursed, uh, people. Uh, witchers, maybe mages. Um, I, I believe that this has something to do with what we've been dealing with. Yeah. They, they target people who are cursed? Yeah. Isn't the whole keep cursed right now? People in particular. Right, but if the keep is cursed, is everyone in it cursed? Not necessarily. I mean, they feel an effects of a curse, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they themselves are cursed. Uh, a, a area can be cursed, but like, so mm. it attacked me because I've got the blood of a witcher. That's technically a curse. Hmm. I didn't know that. Well, I have uh, an inkling of suspicion that it might have been trying to attack any mages that are around as well. It's a well, little hard to get tell. Back. <laughs> yeah. No. How you doing, by the way? You, uh, you look like shit. Thanks. So do you. Uh, I'm just, hey, if your friends don't shoot you straight, who will? I'm, I'm all right. Uh, it's just, I've been having weird nightmares recently. And I mean, anybody who's gifted in these, in these parts are having them from what I've been told. So, right. You know, more magic shit. Yeah, they, uh, they kind of fuck you up, dude. I'm not. I, they fuck All you right. up real bad. Um, mm. But she's just going to pocket the, the, the dust. Um, and go back to that very, like, neutral deadpan expression that everybody is just that that's just the Brynhilder way mm -hmm. and I think we'll head up to Nina's office 
you head up to Nina, Nina's office and you see that Sigrun has returned uh, with a uh, young boy named Tomas. Oh, Thomas. He, yeah. He looks to be about seven and he is the individual who seems to have a way with animals to the point where even currently he has a uh, raccoon that is like kind of clinging to his back. Oh, I thought Thomas was sword kid who I knew. Uh, no, the, uh, oh. that is a different individual. Cool. Nice raccoon friend you got there. Oh, uh, thanks. And the raccoon just like peeks his head up and just like set, like sets its uh, little snoot on his shoulder and then just like sticks its tongue out like blep. That's. I would like to attempt to pet it. You are able to reach out and pet the raccoon without any issues. This is my fantasy game. I get to do whatever I want. <laughs> And is Nienna in the room? Yes, uh, Nienna is currently, uh... Has her nose buried in a book. Yep. Uh. Aerolith will get her attention by walking over and kissing her on the top of the head. Huh. Bottom. She'll set the book aside and look over at, at Thomas. Huh? Thomas? brought your friend again, did you? Yeah, uh, this time I decided to bring Rocky. Lovely. Well, why don't you and Rocky come sit over here and she's gonna pat, pat a little padded stool. And he will move and take that seat. Uh, Rocky will just kind of, like, move to sit in his lap. Just kind of sort of doofy looking with its front paws just like just like uh set in front of it while it's like hind legs kind of splayed out like uh like a kid sitting diff just down on the floor <laughs> Thomas have you had bad dreams lately yeah I have uh Nienna will do something that's highly unusual for her um in front of most other adults. This is not something she typically does unless she's only with the kids. She will set, she will uh, mark where she was in her book and set it aside and she will get up from her chair and then move to sit on the floor so that she is on eye level with him. Can you tell me about them? Please. Uh, yeah. Um, I I just think about being at home and with my dad and when I am sleeping I am I am at home and then suddenly I turn around and I'm not. I'm at some other place. It's dark and it's kind of cold. And it looks like it hasn't been lived in a while. It's very old. Lots of lots of cobwebs everywhere. Is it a house or a castle or a cave? Uh, I think it's a house. I don't didn't look fancy enough to be a castle. Big house or little house? I think it was a little house. I didn't see any stairs up, but I did find some stairs down, though. See. I would look around and see a lot more cobwebs and it almost like the shadows were dancing. I see. Did you hear or smell anything strange? heard laughter kind of sounded like when I would be uh, at at school 
with the others. And then I heard a girl crying. Mm. And did you smell anything? What, like, did it smell damp? Or did you smell plants of any kind? At first it kind of smelled like when we would go out to uh, the forest for our, fi for our field trips. Mm -hmm. Just kind of smelled like flowers and the trees and the dirt. And then I uh, would find the stairs down and it would smell different. It would kind of smell like someone left out uh, meat for too long and it went bad. See. And did you see anything else or did you wake up before you got down the stairs? When I went down the stairs, I saw the person that was crying. It was a, another kid like me. Was it a boy or a girl? Uh, I think it was a girl. She had very pretty, uh, silvery, whitey hair. Uh, kind of like uh, that. And he points over at Brunhilder. See, did you see her face at all? No, she was uh, bundled up and looking away from me. She was crying and there was... <laughs> and he just like shivers a bit and Rocky just turns around and uh, just like puts his paws around uh, his neck to sort of give him a hug. Uh, Nina will scoop him up and uh, put him in her lap and stroke his hair. It's all right. You're safe. There were things smiling in the, in the shadows. What did the things look like? I don't really know. I just saw the smiles. They looked like... broken? The teeth were at funny angles, and the eyes were... Some were yellow, but the biggest ones were red. I see. Can I make a roll of some sort to try and piece stuff like this together? I've ha had a lot of practice studying up on um on everything from prophecy to, to weird dreams, given my history, so. I would say it would be mage training. Uh, I would also allow Brenthilder to do a uh, witcher training check. Okay. Any bonuses? Uh, for this particular one, no. Okay. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna spend two luck and re-roll that, because that's awful. <laughs> it's not good. Well, the, the dice want to tell a story, I guess. They sure do. Um, I rolled a 25. Okay. And that story is Brynhildr Rocks. <laughs> Nienna, this seems off to you. It It's especially odd since it has so much in common with the bit you heard about the dream from Tabitha. Right. It almost seems like the gifted children are all kind of having this shared dream. This is, yeah, all right. Right, that's kind of what I figured. You can't really figure out too much more beyond that, aside from could it be someone reaching out to try to get some help? Could it be the connection to the gift and to the magic is sort of giving them all their own kind of prophecy? You're not you're just not really sure the ins and outs and the logistics of these dreams. Brynhilda. You know that dreams tend to be very powerful sources of information, but they can also be very tricky, given the fact that there are so many beings that can manipulate dreams and sensations. The description that was given 
deafened of like these beasts and shadows, these crooked smiles. They definitely make you think that the that there is something at play that has to do with demons. Grand, powerful specters that tend to avoid having a physical form uh, and more just torment and curse uh, their targets to feed off of agony and suffering. Mm. I... I think I know what this is. Nina will nod a little bit um, and hold up a hand to, to stop her from potentially saying something that might scare the kid in her lap. Um, she's going to... Uh, dip into her pouch and pull out a little, like, sachet of herbs. Um, there's nothing particularly special about it if you don't use magic on it, it's just herbs. Um, but the boy doesn't have to know that. Um, and she's going to tuck it into uh, Tomas's hand. I want you to put this under your pillow at night. And if you get scared and you wake up, wrap your hand around it and think of the happiest moment you've ever known. And it will help to settle your mind, all right? Okay. Thank you, Lady Nienna. Of course. And you make sure to tell Mrs. Miss Sigrin or whoever else is at the school, whatever other adult is there at the time, um, if you have any more bad dreams. Okay. And she will stand him up and kind of nudge him towards, very gently nudge him towards the door. Um, and when he gets to the doorway, she'll she'll kind of go and Thomas. Yeah. And she'll, she'll give him like a little half playful smile. Please don't set any more of your little furry friends loose in the palace next time. Okay. They just wanted to look around, though. They don't get to be in fancy places like this. I understand, but you had my maids all a Twitter. Perhaps someday you can bring a couple of them in and I'll take you for a tour. How's that? Okay. And he just smiles uh, up at Yena and turns to leave. Brynhilde? Yeah. As he gets by you, he looks up at you and, and is smiling, but then suddenly his face goes blank. And his eyes go from a very soft blue to a bright yellow. Come home. Oh, shit. <laughs> and she actually, like, like, visibly back, like, something about that actually startles her and she, like, stumbles back a little bit. Um, does anyone else see and hear that? Yep. But the moment that uh that passes and she stumbles back, he just like blinks and his eyes go back to normal. And he's like, huh? What happened? Uh, I think your raccoon friend over there uh, is trying to steal your herbs. I would run off now. Oh, <laughs> and not, not yeah, my yeah. herbs. And he just like just flees. What was that? I don't know. Uh, I... Uh, you all saw that too? Yes. Everybody come in and sit down. Leanna will stand up and go shut the door. Won't she sure that all of the servants are out of the room? So it seems that the thing that uh, is causing all the nightmares is um, demons. Demons. Yeah. Uh, back when I was in training, we learned a little bit about them. Um, they like to feed off of fear and discontent. And the easiest way to do that is to plague dreams well, 
it's a better way. Do they way need to... a... Sorry. Mm. Do they need terrestrial allies to make that happen? No. Uh, abo- above the table, they sure don't. No, they do not. Hmm. They're powerful creatures. Um, and can pretty much freely enter and leave at their own content. And they feed off of emotion. Um, speaking of feeding, and she's going to take the pouch of um, specter shit out of her out of her pocket and drop it onto the uh, drop it onto the table. We had Deanna. some visitors. <laughs> Deanna will scoop it up, uh, <clears throat> chug the pouch open, make a face, immediately tie it closed again. August. August. Uh, one of they we, there was a pack of them. Some of them left. There was only one or two more. And they haven't gone far. You could still smell the sulfur. It lingers for a while. Um, we took that one down. Uh, it wanted a little taste of Witcher. Where's Phoenix? Back at the uh, Smiths. Was he with you when you fought the Bargast? He was. Nana's gonna go to the door and ask a servant to run and get Phoenix. At once, my lady, and they just book it. Uh, I think Irolet is also going to grab a runner and say, find the guard captains and sell, and tell them to start carrying silver. At once, and they uh, head to spread that message. Uh, quickly enough, Phoenix is able to uh, get summoned to Nyanna's uh, office. Sigrin has also managed to come on back uh, since the runner decided to just go ahead and grab everyone that is usually brought into the offices for purse for private messages. Yeah, I won't tell the guard it's magic, but if Vargas <laughs> I mean, basically to curses, just told him it's fine. <laughs> if Vargas um, are attracted to curses and the castle is cursed, we could be dealing with the rest of the pack any minute. Um, once it, once Phoenix and Sigrin show up, she'll give Sigrin an, a little old smile of greeting. Uh, they see each other regularly anyway, huh? and she'll look over at Phoenix. Master Silversmith. Ox. Oh, morning ah she'll shut the door behind them bogusts and demons well I suppose demons and cursed beings and places aren't entirely unusual for them to be linked together. Bargus, though, are typically only summoned or drawn in by a particularly powerful curse. They don't just occur naturally. <laughs> oh, well, it's your previous embrace of the fan. Yeah, that's me. No, I don't think it is. I think if it was you, we'd have had this problem far, far before now. <laughs> You're not tied to any spooky buildings and silver-haired little girls, are you? No, but I am tied to someone who wants me dead. I would wager that we that most of us are. True, but is your uh, she an elf? Yeah. Why? I uh. Got it through the grapevine that things may not be going well in the uh, Elven capital. He's not there. Apparently, Doblathana is not talking to Nilfgaard the way they used to. Or at all. The person I'm hunting down since Sintra, but I appreciate you looking out. Yeah. 
What do you but, know about what's happening in Dolblathana? Apparently, not long after we pulled our little stunt, a bunch of sages started putting aside their differences, ancient though they may be, gathering in Dolblathana, cut political ties to Nilfgaard, started working on something. And I could wager informed, a guess as to what they're after. Most informed people I know don't know what they're working on. So, I'd obviously love to hear your opinion. Not important for right now. I don't think that has anything to do with what's happening here. There's one thing that could bring every sage okay. in all of Dolblathana together, and it's not this. Okay. Right. The Bargus are here because of the curse. All of the children keep seeing the same building and hearing the same girl crying. We now have a description of her and a better description of the house than we had this morning. I think the obvious next move is that we find the house. Or the little girl, but I think you'll find both in the same place. I may be able to dispel whatever the curse is once I get there, once we find it. Okay. If demons are at play, we... It'll be complicated. Demons are powerful. And not... Do they like silver? Out of character in the Witcher Lord, do demons like silver? That's not something I remember. Um, if I'm being honest with you, I know that they, there's not a whole lot known about them. There really isn't. There is not. Uh, they're not a fan of silver. Mo most sort of specters uh, uh, would be harmed by silver, as most magical beings. Uh, they also do usually require either a little bit of help from moon dust bombs or the sign Irden to keep them locked in reality long enough to actually harm them. Oh. I'll uh, mm. share all of that. It's also worth noting that um, we're not entirely sure what he is, but one of the running theories for the longest time has been that Gonta Odim is an incredibly, incomprehensibly powerful demon. Now, we know it's not him. The terms of our arrangement were that he could not contact any of us unless we contacted him, and I would assume no one in this room is that stupid. Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly don't want to try a second attempt at that whole poem thing, or riddles. Oof. Oh, thank you. That was enough of years off of my lifespan. Agreed. Though, taking a step back for a moment, just for the un... well, more uninitiated among us, uh, what was this curse that you were talking about? The curse that's affecting those in the keep. Making people fight and in shortening tempers. The curse of ah. the shitty mood. Now, being in the presence of a particularly strong curse can just do that. So it may not be that everyone in the... I doubt that everyone in the keep is simply cursed. I think most of us are suffering the side effects of being too close to it. So you think it's placed in a specific portion of the keep then? Perhaps. Or tied or, to um, someone in the keep. Do what I can to support, but I don't really have the skills necessary to tackle any of the things we're talking about. I beg to differ. I think you may have the most important skill uh, we could possibly need with packs of bargists running around. Oh, you have 
Silver weaponry is all set. You couldn't have more if I tried, honestly. Like, everyone is going to have a weapon, and that's all going to be taken care of, but... They also demons smell and... like sulfur, right? Yeah. So you'll know they're coming first. I won't, actually. He holds up his hands, and you see the pegs are in. Hey. Doesn't that help your natural sense of smell? Like, even like this? No. Ah, oh, damn. That sucks. Unfortunate. Well, at the very least, Rendo will be able to pick up on a scent like that uh, around the children, so... At the very least, they'll be well guarded. Mm. Like I said, I'll do everything I can to support, but as far as that curse powers and demons... I'll do what I can do. All right. I can put up posters. Anyone who's seen a little girl with silver hair? That's not that common. Maybe we can get a lead from one of the outlying towns. Potentially. As for the keep... Uh, Nienna, do you happen to keep, um... any sort of... Uh, parchments regarding incidents between uh, any of your staff? That would be a question for the master of the guard. I'm sure the guards keep such uh, records. Well, my thinking was that we would try and see where most of them have happened in recent, and that way we can either narrow it down to specific peoples involved or the location in which these incidents occurred. A good idea. Might also help to have someone who is a bit more... who has the ready ears and eyes of the servants, and she'll look at Sigrun. <laughs> um, have them ask around. I, you'll find that most of my servants are not terribly forthcoming if they think someone might get in trouble with me. Oh, no worries. They might be no. more likely to talk to you. Uh, my skills have an atrophied in that respect, so talk they shall. Brynhilda. Yes? I have a difficult question to ask you. Okay. Do you remember where you grew up before you joined your order? Yes. My first question is, does it sound anything like the house that that Thomas described? That is a good question. Uh, storyteller. Honestly, with the things you've heard, yeah. You didn't grow up in a very big house with your family. You do remember that there that the downstairs was pretty big and important because it would kind of acted as a, a larder for you to keep a lot of your foods and uh, foodstuffs that would need to be that could last longer. It could be. You would, was it in a place that smelled like a forest? It didn't. It was not. It was that was actually in a. Uh, not a large city, but uh, a city in and of itself. Yeah. It was kind of in like the uh, lower uh, end part of the city. Yeah. The house sounds like where I grew up. Small. Uh, I could almost remember perfectly where it is. Well, hey, the demon didn't tell me to go home. I don't know that that was a demon. I thought yellow eyes meant demon. Not always. 
pretty she looks at you yellow. With her, yeah, she looks at you with her yellow eyes. Right, but like in this context, you know what I meant. Don't put can words I, in my mouth. Can I get closer to Brynhilda and kind of do a slow circle around her and try and see if I can sense any weird magic -y vibes that are not just the typical witcher stuff coming off of her? Absolutely. Give me a roll of, we'll call it mage training as opposed to awareness. Okay. Uh, uh, 32. Oh, well, Yo, she, she, she cursed, bruh. <laughs> uh, that is a fantastic question. You are looking around at her and you just sort of feel. Yes. It's odd. It, it It's almost like it was trying to hide from you before. The nature of this curse. It is latched deep onto her. But you can sense that it comes from elsewhere. There, It's almost like it's reached out and taken hold from far, far away. And then you just look at her and you look at the uh, light of the candle that you lit the, to warm up wax for whenever you need uh, to make your proper seals. And you see her shadow. And you look back at it. It is jagged and tall. And not of a human shape. And that is where we're going to end. Thank you.